Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today we're going to discuss three very confusing terms. Uh, in in uh, what's it called? Super training. So super training is like the strength conditioning bible. There's a lot of text in there, and it's <laughs> really small, and the pages are really big. Um, but we we talk about three different speed related adaptations. One being pure speed. One being strength speed, let's do this, one being speed strength, and then another one being strength speed. So yes, the same words hyphenated, but switched. What this means is with speed strength, I'm placing an emphasis on the speed, but I'm getting towards strength. And then with strength speed, I'm placing an emphasis on the strength, but I'm still doing it quickly, right? And then let's just throw a fourth term in there. Let's say strength on the other end of this. So we have speed, speed strength, strength speed, and strength. Okay, now, strength is how much can we output? How are, the way that we are measuring strength has to be one of two things. If you have force plates, you can measure force output um, and you're going to get much different results than if you measure it the traditional way, which is just to see your bar weight. How much weight can you do for a given movement? Um, I think it's more practical to say strength is how much weight can you lift? And I think we need to sometimes consider force a little bit more, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and then speed is, let's say I have some set body weight, for example, how fast can I move in any given distance? Um, so generally we're taking something like a five or 10 yard sprint, if we're in the United States at least. And we're gonna take those numbers and we're gonna try to see those times decrease. We're gonna see you travel that 10 yards in less time. Now, the, there's always a gray area, right? You don't just have heavy stuff and then really fast stuff because as you become more advanced, it's not as simple as that. You, you need other qualities to help support you and help you know, bring up that base fitness pyramid so that you can throw up uh, more adaptations on top of that pyramid. Um, this is just a little metaphor that I like to use. You have a pyramid adaptations. Your base stuff is down at the bottom here. And then your peak stuff, like your power, you don't spend a whole lot of time on, uh, but that is gonna cap you off. Now, let's give an example. So speed, five yard sprint. Speed strength, that might be a light band assisted squat. So I'm taking a relatively light weight and I'm using a band to make me move even faster. Then if we think about strength speed, maybe that is also banded. Maybe that band is pulling me down. It doesn't have to, um, but this is just another variation of this. And maybe now I'm using a much heavier weight, maybe something that I start to slow down by the last rep of my set. And that would be more of a strength speed type of adaptation. And then if I'm just doing strength, that's like powerlifting training. That's like I'm doing a three rep max and probably all of them are pretty slow. Uh, okay, now, when would I use them? So in general, I'm gonna spend more time on the strength side of stuff um, just because it's a little bit easier on the body and because it's better for beginners. Uh, generally, you know, the, the band stuff and other types of stuff isn't necessarily bad for people, but I think that a lot of people get a lot of good stuff out of just learning how to lift kind of heavier. You get a lot of good force development out of that. So you're gonna spend most of your time over on that side. As you get more advanced, you're gonna get a lot out of more of the speed work stuff because your body at some point, it can't move any slower. I think when you're early on, you, you kind of learn how to move slowly when stuff gets heavy so you can keep applying that force. But later on, 
you just you don't handle that very well anymore. You can't move any slower because you've already learned how to move slow. So now you need to learn how to move heavy stuff that is normally slow, but a little bit faster. And that's where strength speed work comes in. That's where I might throw in a band or some chains on the bar so that that resistance changes throughout the, the movement that I'm training. Then speed strength stuff. So that stuff that I'm not gonna notice nearly as much fatigue from doing. Um, so I wanna prioritize, like we, we've mentioned in a previous video, I wanna prioritize my rest there. I need to make sure that I'm not, you know, using that as conditioning work, I'm using that as speed development, power development, but power development under some sort of load. So it's not gonna be the purest sense of running with just my body weight, but it's gonna be a light weight that I can easily manhandle and I'm trying to push up those speeds as high as I can. And then on the last side of things, we have pure speed. Um, in general, people don't handle that quite as well as strength work because strength work is slow. Um, if you are an athlete, you absolutely have to do it and you have to do it all the time. So keep doing it. If you are somebody who has a day job and <laughs> general life stress, you might want to emphasize it for a month and then maybe do a little bit during your programs. But you're not going to throw on a whole lot of speed volume. Again, we've mentioned this previously, but I need to stay really, really fresh if I'm going to develop my speed and my power. So you don't want to do too much work in those zones. Hopefully that clears some stuff up. This is more of a, a theoretical uh, programming discussion. Maybe for some of you who are thinking about writing your own program, maybe for some of you who are thinking about getting into personal training, this is a good way to start dissecting some more advanced programming topics.